Today on Getting Real with the Housewives, Beverly Hills is back and we're breaking down all the drama from the big premiere. Plus, Erica Jane tells us that she still takes phone calls from ex Tom Girardi. It's difficult, you know, there are real moments of sadness, real moments of like, like when the holidays came around. You know, for Christmas, I, I just remember how much fun we would have. And Sutton Strack addresses her strange behavior after learning of Dorit's break-in. I just feel really terrible about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, the feelings get hurt. All that and so much more on today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Us Weekly executive producer, Mandy DeCamp, and we got a Big, big week of Housewives news, shows, so much going on, Mandy. So much Beverly Hills. I'm so excited. It's back. So excited it's back. We have a big yeah. Jersey reunion to get to. Yeah. Before we get to all that, let's see what you guys had to say about last week's show. Yeah, so we're still very much in Jersey land um, in the comments. Mm -hmm. Je Jeannie Shretner said, I really hope they keep Jackie. I enjoy her and her husband and believe she is really helping people with regards to eating disorders. I have a friend with the issue and I know she has helped me understand better how difficult this is to live with. I totally agree with you. I think we said it last week. We're, we're definitely team Jackie. Um, and we were surprised. And a lot of you guys commented yeah. that you want to see Jackie back. So yeah, I think it would be a weird out. move, but I, yeah. I don't know if they don't get rid of anybody on Jersey. I think it's a good mix. of yeah. people. Some people did disagree with us. They want to see some mixed up faces, okay. but they didn't agree. But uh, most people want Jackie back. So yeah. We'll see. We'll Most see. people want Teresa gone, but do you have Jersey Housewives without Teresa? There's no way. You can't have Jersey without yeah. Teresa. Definitely not. Um, Michael says, New York Housewives trip to Morocco was incredible. Loved when Kelly and Luann were getting their henna tattoos and Simon's wife came stomping down in her Herman Monster shoes, LOL. Yes, talking about iconic um, moments in Housewives history. What a throwback. I love that, Michael. Um, I, I honestly want to go back and watch like season one of New York. I think it was a great season that I kind of overlooked. I, I same here. Like I never really got super into New York until like later season. So I really need to do a deep dive and go all the way back because yeah. yeah, iconic moments. All right, let's get into some housewives news. Mandy, where should we start? All right. So Bronwyn is back in the news. Bronwyn Wyndham Burke from OC. Uh, she's living her best life with girlfriend Victoria Brito. Brito? Brito? I'm not sure. At the 2022 GLAAD Media Awards in New York City, the Real Housewives of Orange County alum exclusively gushed to Us Weekly saying, meeting her has been phenomenal and I think I'm falling in love, especially falling in love later in life. It makes me appreciate it all so much more. The former reality star is still married to but separated from husband Sean Burke. Uh, she came out in December of 2020 in a candid interview with GLAAD. At the time, she stated, I like women. I'm gay. I'm a member of the LGBTQ plus community. It has taken me 42 years to say that, but I'm proud to be of where I am right now. I'm so happy where I am to be able to be comfortable in my own skin after so long. It's just so nice. Um, of course, she shares seven children with Sean, which I still can't get over. No. Um, she's been in a relationship with her new girlfriend since late 2021. So she further told us, I'm so glad for the children I've had. My ex-husband is amazing. I'm so grateful. She further said that she wishes there had been uh, re this representation that we have now when she was younger. And she's happy to show women it's never too late to start living your authentic self. Um, she's also grateful that we get to show up and that we get to show the younger generations. I get to show my own kids. Not only is it okay to be queer, but look, mom is doing it and it's amazing. The California native also told us that she feels free in her life. And she said, it's like, I'm wearing the right size coat. Finally. I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Well, good for her. I mean, she seems really yeah. happy. I mean, the whole dynamic was still with her ex-husband, separated husband still kind of confuses me a little bit, but yeah. whatever works Thanks. for her and her family. Whatever works. The only thing I will say is like she has gone public with her every girlfriend she's had since her and her ex split. So I'd take a step back, maybe, maybe just like, you know, let's see if this is going to work out before you just go do red carpets again and and say you're in love again. You know, you do have seven kids to protect, but I'm happy for her. All right. Moving on to Nene Lee's because she insists that she isn't throwing a temper tantrum over her lawsuit with Bravo. She's simply just fighting back. So the former Real Housewives of Atlanta star claimed in a statement to TMZ saying, I've been blacklisted. If you haven't worked in more than three years, when all of a sudden you're working and sought after, then suddenly you're not working, it's being blacklisted. I haven't caused any problems on any sets. Everybody I've ever worked with, I've had a good work relationship with, except for this group of people. 
Now, she initially joined the cast of Real Housewives back in 2008 before announcing her departure in season seven. She returned in season 10, 11, and 12 before permanently leaving in September of 2020. At the time, she shared on her YouTube channel, I've made the hard, hard and very difficult decision to not be part of the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 13. It wasn't an easy decision for me. There's been a lot of emotion flying on both sides. I'm just so happy that I was part of a genre that opened doors for Black ensemble reality shows. So now the TV network in a statement to Us Weekly at the time wished her all the best in her future endeavors, saying she's been instrumental since the start and will truly be missed and maybe one day she'll hold the peach again. Well, when asked if she was looking for compensation from the lawsuit, she told TMZ that she couldn't speak on that, but claims that she was aiming for a new show of her own on the networks uh, and on the network was so ridiculous. The TV personality added that we're talking about discrimination, we're not talking about a show. It has nothing to do with having a temper tantrum and wanting a show. I never wanted my own show. I mean, I had many opportunities to have one. That's not it. It's discrimination. That's what it is. Now, her statement comes on the heels of her lawsuit against NBC Universal, Bravo, production companies, True Entertainment, and truly original and executive producer Andy Cohen. This just keeps getting messier and messier. Yeah, I'm a little confused. So she chose to leave Atlanta, right? Yes, she chose to leave Atlanta. She even said, like, I think in the months, even like a couple months ago, that she thought about maybe coming back. So this yeah. seems a little confusing to me. I feel like we're missing details that I would love yeah. to know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There are rumors circulating in Housewives World that Gina Kirschenheider has been demoted to friend on OC. Now, Us Weekly does not have any sources saying this. This is from coming from other bloggers, which we all know the bloggers can be wrong. Um, we only report things once they're real here. So it's just rumors. But um, she addressed the reports in a series of posts she shared on social media after a fan wrote to her in a comment saying that they hope to see more of her friendship with Heather Dubrow. Gina said, rumors, rumors, ah. <laughs> Another person wrote, please tell me you weren't demoted. And she responded, wasn't demoted. So, I mean, I feel like in the past we have had people say that they weren't demoted and then they were. So I don't know if her comments are, you know, written in concrete or if she's just trying to, you know, not admit it yet. I feel but, like she'll be back. I don't know. Unless they yeah. like completely scrap this whole cast again and start over. But I feel like yeah. she like was at least interesting this season. Yeah. I'm not You're on the fence about I it. don't like Gina on OC. Like I'd love to see Gina actually on New York, New York. Yeah. She's from New York. I don't understand why she's living in. I mean, her husband got a job in the OC, but I don't think he works there anymore. No, they should go back to New York, go back to long Island. And I'd love to see a long Island housewives actually. I would love to see a Long Island Housewives. How has that not happened already? So I've, you know, I'm from Long Island, so I've been pushing for this my whole life, <laughs> my whole, my whole Housewives uh, adult life. Um, I don't know. They did the Princesses of Long Island, which right. was so bad it was good. Uh -huh. um, I just feel like it might be hard getting people to be on the show. There, people are very like it closed off, like maybe uh -huh. not willing to share everything. Right. I, I don't I don't know. There really should be one. There really should. Yes, totally. Well, yeah. Totally. All right. Well, let's get into our Real Housewives rewind and starting with Jersey reunion part two. I'm so sad that this season is almost over. I know. So good. We got Joe Gorga versus Teresa Judice backstage, this fight between them. What do you think about this? Okay. First of all, I just have to say, I worked at Rachel Ray show for seven years. That was backstage at the Rachel Ray show. I was, was like really? so excited. Yes. <laughs> I was texting all my old friends like, this is, this is our old studio. And they're like, yeah. That's <laughs> like, hysterical. So he was literally sitting in Rachel Ray's uh, green room or yeah, her dressing room chair as he was fighting, which I thought was hysterical. Um, I loved it. I loved every minute of that whole fight backstage. Yeah. I thought it was so ridiculous. I love it when Andy Cohen has to go backstage and break up a fight. I am. I'm just really into that. <laughs> so into it. So into it. And Joe Gorga is not quitting. So thank God for that. Oh yeah. I was, I'm so surprised. We also um, heard more from Jackie had a very serious moment with her. She said that she is doing better. Um, she said that she has gained some weight. Um, still feels like she's really struggling here. And, you know, like our, our viewer earlier commented, you know, it's opening everyone's eyes into something that you might not know that much about, which yeah. I thought was interesting. You know, I, I've had friends who I thought had eating disorders and things like that, but I really didn't not know the ins and outs of, no. of what could possibly go into it. Like it did with her, like measuring spoons, calling ahead to restaurants, 
yeah, only cutting, having two real meals a week, right? Cutting vacation short because she didn't want to eat out that much. She, you know, this really kind of consumed her life. And it's, it's yeah. really, I'm really happy that she's in a better place and that her family, mm-hmm. um, her husband are really supportive. So good for her. Yeah. It's really, yeah. you know, and then Teresa's uh, leggings comments. Teresa can never just say she's sorry. Never. She will <laughs> never say sorry. No. Um, the leggings comment was ridiculous. And clearly she's trying to promote her leggings that apparently don't make your butt jiggle. And then we saw more about Bill's affair and all of that. Um, I don't, you know, I think we're going to talk to Bill more next week. I think, yes. It, yeah. it seems like all the, the house husbands uh, come on and yeah. we'll finally get to hear Bill's side of the story because he really didn't say much this season. And mm-hmm. kind of Jennifer did a lot of the talking for him. Yeah. Um, do we think Jennifer is getting a little too worked up, a little kind of in everybody's face? I mean, she brought the receipts this time the with, uh, you know, it's always good when people are bringing the receipts. <laughs> I mean, like Andy Cohen said, it was like a TED talk. She had pages and pages of Instagram comments. Um, I, again, thought it was great, but yeah, Jennifer is just trying to stir the pot as she does very well. And, you know, it will probably get her a a slot in the next season. (laughs) Oh, love her or hate her. She's a great housewife. Yeah, she really is. I mean, she's, uh, definitely earning her paycheck. And then, um, this bombshell of David and Frank living together. I need to know more. I, like, I want to live in that house right now with them because I want to know more about all of their relationships with Dolores. She's pretty private when it comes to why her relationships don't work out or whatever happened. Um, she's said that on the show that she's pretty private about relationships. So I would love to have, I think we should try to get David and Frank and interview yes. them and just be like, you tell us why it didn't work. <laughs> right. I mean, it's why just, you're living together. Why you're living together. I mean, Frank is a grown man. It makes his own money. He can certainly afford to, a place yeah. to live. It's just yeah. really odd to me. I mean, Dolores did say that he's like uh, under construction on a house. Um, so that's probably why, yeah. but I don't, I don't know. We have her, we, you asked her about this too. Yeah. So let's, let's see what she had to say. How do you feel about Frank saying that he mainly lives with at David's? Is that awkward still? You know, is it conventional? No, it's not. <laughs> but they have a good bond. They're two good friends. Mm-hmm. They came close because of me. Why would I take that from them? Yeah. That's between them, you know? I, I'm happy that they have each other. And I don't care who thinks it's weird. Mm-hmm. Because you know what? 20... Four years ago, when people thought when I was going through this horrible divorce, that me staying close with my ex-husband was weird and I fought it then. So I'll fight it again. No one can tell me anything in my life is weird because my life works. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, very interesting. I guess. I mean, if she's okay with it, I guess we should be okay with it. I guess so. (laughs) All right. Well, now it is time to break down the big Real Housewives of Beverly Hills premiere. We've been waiting for this for months and months and months, and we are back. And Erica is back in the dating pool. I'm so into that, too. I mean, I hope that we get to see her actually dating this season. I don't know if we will, but she says that she's doing it. Mm -hmm. That she's more interested in good sex than a boyfriend. Um, you know, I want to, I want to hear all about her dating escapades. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting. I mean, um, we're going to hear more from her in a little bit, but when I spoke to her about dating, she said, you know, it's kind of hard, really hard for her to trust people. She's not ready to get back into a full relationship, but you know, looking for good sex, (laughs) (laughs) whatever works. Just fine. (laughs) Um, we also saw that Lisa Rinna brought up Sutton's jab on watch what happens live. It was a little complicated for me. I feel like I do feel though that Sutton is not in the best place right now. I felt like she in that premiere did a lot of weird things that made me kind of take a second look. What do you think? Do you think that Definitely. She's, something, yeah. something is off? Something yeah. is really off. I mean, I know we'll probably talk about it in a little bit, or we could just talk about it now. That whole Kyle Sutton conversation about Dorit's break in was the weirdest thing so I've ever seen. Strange. So strange. And you asked her about that. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she doesn't, she does mention that she's single for the first time, I think yeah. in a very long time. So maybe she's a little thrown off by that. Maybe. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting when I spoke to her as well, she actually said, we're going to see her kids this season, which I wasn't, um, no. which we haven't seen before. So that, I mean, we're going to see some new sides of her, but yeah, something is bothering her. Something is a little bit off and I don't know. It seems like this, uh, Elton John party kind of takes over a little bit of a storyline yeah. this season as well. Yeah. Recently. 
Um, also, what did you think about Erica fighting with the producer saying that like she she knows that she's innocent and that's all she <laughs> or talk to my lawyers. That was so uncomfortable. That yeah. poor producer probably like, OK, I know. I, know. <laughs> I know. I don't think it was right the way that she spoke to them. Um but it made for good TV. It did make for good TV. <laughs> but I guess at this point, you know, you know, Erica said, you know, she's frustrated that she feels like she has to continue to um, tell her story over and over again. But I guess people still have a lot of questions. Yeah, right. From so. Yeah. And it's still, oh. you know, the jury's still out. Yeah, it's, it's so true. It's it's not over yet. And then, you know, we finally see this big, you know, the break in. I mean, the footage of that is absolutely terrifying. Like the fact that she had to go through that, she had a gun pointed to her head while her kids were sleeping in the next room. Like, I can't imagine something more horrifying than that. No, I was absolutely horrified by it. The one thing, just have to say it, I thought it was a little strange that the very next night she's at Kyle's without her kids. The weirdest. I would have brought my kids. The weirdest thing. I said the same thing. I was like, if that happened to me, I would not be going to Kyle's the night that my house got broken into. Like, where are your children? Where? And I think they were with like a nanny. I don't even think they were with like, there's no, I mean, yes, of course, what are the chances that would happen two nights in a row or whatever? But I just wouldn't want to be away from my children. I thought that I thought the same thing too. And same thing with PK going from the airport right to Kyle's house instead of like going, I know they probably had to shoot this, had to shoot a scene, um, had to make that happen. But still like sometimes family comes over work in that sense. Like you could have waited a couple days, maybe. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, And then Sutton of course, wasn't there for that either. Right. Yeah. She wasn't there for that. Definitely uh, noticeably absent. Yeah. All right. Well, before we get to this week's Atlanta, uh, we had a few interviews with the ladies. So first let's get to Erica Jane. Um, she told it, told you that she still gets phone calls from Tom, which shocked me mm-hmm. and she's still mourning her marriage. So take a look. I know you said at the reunion that Tom called you every day. Does he still do that? Are do you still have any communication with him? What's kind he of calls from time to time? Yes. Time. Yeah. And, and do you take those calls? Of course. Yeah. How's he doing? You know, he's not well. And so he's in a state of decline and sometimes it's good. And sometimes I'm someone else, you know, so it's fine. Right. I mean, I think if people kind of forget about the whole scheme of things is that like you were married to somebody for 20 years and you were also mourning that marriage as well. I mean, how hard was that for you on top of everything else? Because you had to, you were, it was like a one, two punch pretty much. It still is. I mean, I still am mourning that marriage. And still, Mm -hmm. thank you for saying that, because I think that that gets lost in the, um, you know, sensationalized version of it all. This Mm -hmm. was someone I was married to for over, you know, for 20 years and was, you know, with like 23. Um, It's difficult. You know, there are real moments of sadness, real moments of like, like when the holidays came around, you know, for Christmas, I, I would just remember how much fun we would have. And, you know, and then what, what are you going to do with that? These things happen in life. So you, they happen to everyone. Everyone's mourning something. So, you know, just me too. Pull up your bootstraps and keep on going. Um, yeah, it's crazy that they're still talking, still in communication. But, you know, you have to remember it was a 20 plus year marriage. So I guess she still has feelings. All right. Well, we also sat down with Sutton, like we said, who opened up about why she reacted the way she did to Dorit's robbery. Take a look. In the first episode, it centers a lot around Dorit's robbery. And when you spoke to Kyle, it seemed like, I mean, I know that you were concerned, but maybe not as concerned as probably Kyle would have thought. What was kind of your mindset going into that? And what were you kind of thinking, if you can explain that? Yeah, I think the mindset is a good place to start. You know, I had had a very strange morning Mm -hmm. and day, and um, I didn't know a lot about what was going on. And um, so I didn't know the severity. I didn't really quite understand. And I, my mindset wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So I was being insensitive. Mm-hmm. And um, I think had I been with Dorit, it would have been a different situation. Um, and I'm sorry that that didn't happen. I, I didn't, I just feel really terrible about the whole thing Mm -hmm. and that, you know, the feelings get hurt. Yeah. And, you know, I am, you know, I take things really seriously and always want to be there for my friends when they need me. 
and I was not mm -hmm. in this moment and I don't feel good about it. This will definitely be a big storyline this season. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I can't imagine Erica walking, watching that back too. And oh God, gonna be awkward. Yeah. All right, let's move on quickly to Atlanta. Um, what do you think about Marlo's white refrigerator comment? Okay, well, I have a lot of opinions. I have a white, right? Okay, so I don't, I have a normal whatever refrigerator in my kitchen, but then I have a white refrigerator, one of those old ones like she had back in our laundry room. And I have to say it is the best refrigerator. It holds way more than my other refrigerator holds. It keeps things colder and it's probably like 30 years old. So I'm all for the white refrigerator, Marlo. I am too. I have one in my basement and it's fantastic. It yeah. hasn't let me down yet. No. <laughs> um, let's get into this um, assistant drama. We have a couple assistant dramas a, going a few on. different ones, yeah. Uh, one with Drew and Sheree, another with Ralph's assistant. There's like a, just a lot going yeah. on here. I feel like the Sheree one, they were just forcing something. I feel like it's someone that she doesn't typically use that much. She didn't get that into it. I don't know if this is going to be an ongoing storyline or if this was just kind of like a one-off rude comment that they were trying to make into something bigger. Right. I just love how they Chiron him. Maybe Sheree's assistant. I just love yeah. it. Yeah. I love, <laughs> I love it. that. <laughs> um, Candy and Todd seem to be kind of not on the same page this season or at least in this episode, but I really, all I could focus on was that indoor pool and how they're using it as a storage facility. <laughs> I can't. I'm so, I'm the opposite. Like, especially if I'm assuming Candy has some decent money. Yeah. And I, if I had like, I'm the type of person I can't leave one thing in a box. Like how long has she lived in this house that she sells things in boxes? I know. I that. And if I had the money like her, I just hire people to, un to do this. <laughs> totally. And then Ralph and Drew's date night, he tried to make it nice, kind of backfired. It's, yeah. It seems like they really have some issues this season that they have to work through. Yeah, I like that he did clarify that his assistant's 50 years old, but that's only tw 12 years older than him. Right, doesn't yeah. Nothing could happen. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, that doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if she's uh, 20 years younger, 20 years yeah. older, it still can happen. Yeah, no, uh, she said that they're still working through things, but I don't know, not not the best of places that, they, that they're in right now. No. Well, let's get to our social spotlight of the week where we discussed which housewife caught our attention on social media. Mine went to uh, Joe Gorga, is he posted a clip of Michael Rappaport hosting the Wendy Williams show. And he was talking about, um, you know, ab about Joe and Teresa's fight. But the thing was, is that Teresa commented saying that she was so sorry and that she did not mean to uh, to offend Joe. So I love how she had to apologize on Instagram. But I don't know if she picked up the phone to actually call him. Right. Or like go down the block. He lives right. down the block from you. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> right, uh, interesting. I love it. I love it so much. All right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Getting Real with the Housewives. If you want our full interview with Dolores, make sure you listen to our Getting Real with the Housewives podcast. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.